Welcome to those also who are following us on YouTube. Hope that you have everything you need. If you notice that some paperwork are given to the people here, you need to request it to Olga. Send an email to Olga, TSM, uh, Gmail, and so on. Find us on the website if you want to obtain your copy of the outlines that are given and so on and so forth. Um, like I said, I do appreciate your um, fellowship that you have and so on. Um, it shows that this is essential for the growth and the faith and so on. Why don't we start with uh, our usual silent time and uh, I will make a short review. And like I said, and I repeat, you should be on page 14 on top on the capital M, the persecution of the Jews. And we are still laboring on part nine on, on the page 13, the events of the middle of the Great Tribulation. By the way, we are doing very good in our study. And uh, we have more work to do, of course, but we are well. We're doing well in our studies here concerning the book of Revelation. Silent time in prayer, dear beloved. Gracious Father, we give you thanks for this silent time right now. We're not used to it. It's a noisy world. Thank you for your divine presence within us through the power of Jesus Christ and our faith placed in him. We have people present in class right now from all walks of life, people that you are well, intimately acquainted with. I am asking you, dear Father, to prosper them, primarily spiritually, secondly, probably physically, emotionally, and name it. So many of the beloved right now in faith are suffering depression. We pretend that YouTube, Zoom, go to meeting does the trick, but it's only part of the trick. We're social being and we cannot isolate for a long period of time, purely unhealthy. So Lord, thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your patience. I am asking you to carry on being fully sovereign over the planet and what's going on in this world. But above all things, Father, I would like to ask you to come back. Amen. Here, uh, it's not happening. It's declining. It's degenerating. Only your presence on this planet will indeed bring the reign of peace that your beloved, I hope, are expecting to come soon. While we wait for this glorious appearance, glorious appearing, help us out to make a wise usage of our time together, that we may present unto you a heart of wisdom. I pray this in Jesus' name. Last week, if you turn with me in Matthew chapter 24 for a quick moment, go to Matthew chapter 24. Sylvie, can you turn, uh, close the door of the bathroom so that I may not hear the fan? Matthew chapter 24, when, I, when a person is sent to Matthew chapter 24, despite the view that a person old on the Bible, when you send a person to 24 and 25 of the book of Matthew, you send them to the Olivet Discourse and the parable following the Olivet Discourse. You have no choice. You cannot twist this one around, which is the last uh, great discourse of Christ, of his public ministry. And when we say the Olivet Discourse here, this is a prophetic discourse that talks about what we are studying in the book of Re Revelation. That's why I like the remark of Derek sometimes, okay, finally we turn into the book of Revelation. But I told you that here it's an extensive studies, study of prophecy 
that you cannot be happy only with the book of Revelation, that you need correlating scriptures and so on to make your point. What we have seen, when you look at the screens, always by means of review and so on, we are still into the events of the middle of the Great Tribulation. Coming soon to this, here the events basically... I don't have the thing. Give me a moment of grace. I just need to have the uh, chip that recognize the distance. This is not the 666 mark of the beast, by the way. <laughs> Does include the slide of it, but not the mark. All right, this is basically we're getting in preparation for this. And I told you last week that this will be basically a period of time based upon the word of Christ. In Matthew 24, 21 to 22, it's review right now where it says, For then there will be a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world. So you need to think Noah, you need to think Adam and Eve until now, nor ever will. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, in that case, the elect is not you and I. Not at all. The elect is not you and I in the very context. The elect is the tribulation remnant, the tribulation saints of the remnant. Those days will be cut short. So I just wanted to review that. And then we went into Revelation 12. Would you go for a moment? Revelation chapter 12. Go there for a moment. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Just visualize it and circle in verse 1 a sign, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and her head a crown of 12 stars. And she was with child from verses 1 to 5. It's a summary of Israel. The woman there is Israel. Okay, that's the wife of Jehovah. They make a summary and Israel, here she was the one pregnant with the child because the Christ Jesus that we love is of Jewish origin. So he is a Jew there. And she gave birth and one third of the stars of heaven, which are angels, were basically demonstrating a lot of activities when Christ came, lots of act demonic activities. And there will be lots of demonic activities in the period of the Great Tribulation. <laughs> When you study the scriptures, demonology, there is period in history where it was high, low, high and low. It's not always the same, I mean, on this planet. In the heavenlies, it's always high. But in this planet here, when Christ came, that's why there was lots of demonic activities. Now it's low in a sense of on earth. But when Satan will be thrown down in the period of the bowls and so on, it will be out of the heavenlies and there will be a top increase of demonic activity in an all-out war against the Jews. And you guys, have it, without boasting, and I have the right to boast in Christ and you too, you're endowed with a tremendous amount of knowledge. Very few Christian knows why Satan is trying to get rid of the Jewish nation. And you don't need to speak Bible to understand this. You can speak Holocaust of the time of the Nazi. If you wipe out the Jewish nation, Louis, what will be happening? No one can open the word from God. This is a piece of information that you need to have. So if Satan, in any kind of form, achieved to wipe out that nation of the planet, the Jews have to, have to, his, have to ask him to come back based upon Hosea. So if you have no Jews, who's going to ask him to come back to church? No. The Jews. They're not Jews. Correct. It's beautiful. So these are pieces of information that needs to stay with you. Then I explain in verse 6. Come with me in verse 6. I'm still a, always to bring you up to speed. The woman fled into the wilderness. Circle wilderness three times where she had a place prepared by God so that there she would be nourished for 1,260 days. So the 1,260 days, you have it on the TV. The 1,200, 200, the 1,260 days are in red. 
five years, the second half of the Great Tribulation. Are you with me? Okay, 1260 days, it's time, times, and half a time. Time, one year, times, two year, half a time, half a year, 3.5. And then you said 1,293 days? 90. 1290, not 1293, which is a figure that will be explained later to you. Then I talked to you about 13 and 17, 13 to 17, where the wings, they will be rescued in Basra and Petra. This is your wilderness of verse 6, because the Lord Jesus Christ do not come back in Jerusalem. 95% of the Christian, they believe that he comes back in Jerusalem. He does not. He comes back physically in a city called Basra or Petra. Basra is Hebrew, Petra is Greek. And there they will be protected divinely. When you read in verse, um, but the wings of the great eagle were given to the woman, it's not the U.S. Air Force because I read some commentaries, because the U.S. Air Force, they have a circle with the wings of an eagle, they will not be rescued by the United States. By the way, the United States per se have a very minor role to play in the Great Tribulation and in prophecies. Very minor. Don't think that they are the navel of the world. They're not. Jerusalem is. So it's a divine, it's a Jewish and the, uh, idiom, for divine intervention and divine protection. Having said this, we move on to capital N. Are you ready with me? We move on to capital N right now. We're no longer on capital M here. Look at your outlines. What's the title of capital N? The midterm announcements. The mid -term announcements. For that period of time, for that Yes, Sylvie, show it, lift it up to show to the people. That's what you need to have in front of you. That's what you, anybody without it? Sue, you don't have this? Okay. Beautiful. Uh, can I, who is not using that copy at all because they like to make a note? Otherwise, I would love to have a copy of it. Good. Okay, just to see the order that I have, I have my notes. Well, I'll give it back to you in a moment. So right now you turn in Revelation chapter 14, please. Make your notes now. I'm working out with you. Make your note. Revelation chapter 14 is the connecting link, the connecting link of the mid-trib events of the middle of the tribulation events of Revelation chapters 10 to 13. I repeat, your Revelation chapter 14, because it's not a chronological order that we have necessarily in the book of Revelation, your chapter 14 that you are on right now is your connecting link of mid-tribulation events where do you find your mid-trib events in chapters 10 to 13? This is your connecting link and the events of the second half of the Great Tribulation and the events of the second half of the Great Tribulation which are found in Revelation 15 and 16. I repeat in one sentence, let it give you a few seconds to make your notes. Because that's why the confusion, lots of people, you cannot teach the book of Revelation by chapters. It becomes very confusing unless you know what are the connecting links within it. So I repeat, the Revelation 14 that you are on right now, and if you look at your outlines here, the, 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 the mid-revelational events, that's why I'm, co I'm, I'm, I'm coming... Uh, capital N, the mid-trib uh, mid announcements here, need to understand this. Your Revelation 14 is your connecting link 
of the mid-tribulation events of Revelation chapter 10 to 13 and the events of the second half of the Great Tribulation found in 15 to 16. The seven proclamations of God that were just about ready to take, now you don't need to note all this, it's on your half page, German. They have three purposes. They have three purposes. The purposes of what we're just about ready to study, the seven proclamations of God or divine proclamations, have three purposes or it aims at three things. Number one, capital A, to predict the failure of the counterfeit program. I will never emphasize enough, never enough for a study of the end time. If you start to talk about the end time with your people, which is very legitimate because it's Bible discussion and it could be all uplifting, if you keep your eyes away from this, you'll get confused. The real, con the real um, Trinity is the Father, the Son, Christ Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And the counterfeit program is Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet. This will help you to clarify many things in further studying the book of Revelation. So capital A, it's there to predict the failure of the counterfeit program. Capital B, the second purpose of it, it's to announce the result of the coming judgments. Which judgments? You answer the question. Just only one person? Louder than this. There is a coming judgments. It cannot be the seals. Be with me. It cannot be the trumpets. We have blown six so far. Good. Thank you. Be with me, not to be mixed up. So because if I'm as far as, far as I'm concerned to announce the result of the coming judgments, we have studied it somewhat chronolo chronologically. And I ask you kindly to know your three sets of judgments on the top of your head. Envelopes, breaking the seals, opening the envelopes. Blowing the trumpet, so far, one is not blown yet because the seven trumpet contains the oh. yowch. And the coming judgment are the epitome, the climax, because they go from severe to mild. True or false? false. Good. They go from? Mild. Mild. Capital C, it's to provide a word of assurance and comfort to the saints of the second half of the Great Tribulation. So that's the purpose of everything that I will be said from now on for the major part of the first session this morning. I forgot the water. Carol, I still have it. Don't believe it. Usually I forget it somewhere all the time. So. Okay, look, we carry on. Now we take the seven proclamations. It's only the scriptures that you have, so make your notes. I will read and make comments accordingly. These are seven divine proclamations that we are basically are from the divine side, and they are aimed at the three things that you have made. Chapter 14 of your Revelation, verses 1 to 5. Come with me. Then I looked... And behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his name and the name of his Father written on their forehead. So that's the, the real Trinity there. I heard a voice from heaven like the sound of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. And the voice which I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harp. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders, which is the church already in heaven. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been bought or purchased from the earth. These are the ones who have not defiled with women, so they are virgin male, for they have kept themselves chaste. They are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes, these have been purchased from among 
men as first fruits to, to God and to the Lamb. And no lie was found in their mouth. They are blameless. So that's the first proclamation. We'll summarize that. It is a millennial scene. It is a millennial scene. It's a, it's a scene in heaven. And that, what that scene shows, it shows, according to ABC at the top of your half pager, it shows that there was a failure. It's a millennial scene after all this. It shows that the, 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 the aim to destroy the Jews have failed. That's the glory of God. That's the grace of God right there. So that's the first proclamation. More details than this is not necessary because you know that the 144,000 evangelists, you know that they are Jews from the 12 tribes of Israel and they are in the first part of the Great Tribulation evangelizing the people. So that's why people will come to faith during the Great Tribulation. Make an additional note, verse 4, they are the first fruits, circle that word. They are the first fruit. Because they are the first fruit, being kind of the first people to be saved by God. Showing you that during the great tribulation, there will be lots of people being saved, Jews and Gentiles. But in the case of the 144,000, they are Jewish believer. Repeat what? The 144,000 are Jewish believer. They are the first fruit, showing that people will be saved in the Great Tribulation. In the first half? In the first half, all the time. All throughout the Great Tribulation, some people will find grace. I'm going to show you somewhere just to, to answer that question, because now you will see something. Did you see my clicker? Right there. I don't know what follows. But I'm going to take time to show you something here. Lots of people, not lots of people, but a few have wondered with time. When you go to that first slide, which is right in front of you, you can go to that slide right now. I think this is your first one. Just because of the question and because of the sentence that I've made here, the dispensation of grace, we are in the dispensation of grace right now. And the next dispensation to come is the dispensation of the kingdom right there. But look at the great tribulation, that little half moon right there. It's located on the grace. And it's kind of offensive in a sense because you say, how can the great tribulation with so much people that will die and perish could be on the grace? Now you have the question. It's on the grace because lots of people will be saved during that period of time. So your dispensation of grace does include the church age under which you are and under which I am, and it will also include the great tribulation. Because grace is seen right now in the fact that some churches do evangelism and you share your faith with people also. People come to faith or grow in the faith, and there will be also under grace the great tribulation. This is a good thing to know for you as well. I'm determined, like I said, and I repeat repeatedly, this is my best study since I take time with you. I'm no longer in the rush. I'm trying to calm down, which works to an extent. So thank you for your prayer. Oh, okay, so you're saying that when uh, church, the dispensation of grace ends, the church age and the tribulation, there is no more grace. Oh yeah, grace is always seen you know, in the messianic kingdom. You, this is the dispensation of covering. correct. It's called something else. Correct. Okay. Okay. There was grace throughout all the dispensation. Okay. Okay. It's. Uh, I appreciate that input. I appreciate it. I'm going to tell you why right now, which is no longer to nowhere to be seen in my notes. So many older Christians and younger Christians are still caught up in deeds. 
It should go back there. Give me your chart. Here, there is a red cross on it. Not the red cross, red cross, but the cross in red, the cross of Christ. What's the dispensation before the dispensation of grace? Come on. The dispensation of the law. You have this, not dispensation under now, but you have denominations that are called the seven days Adventist. And the seven days Adventist, they worship the Sabbath more than they worship Christ. And you cannot get to heaven with this if you place anything before Christ. Sabbath is good. You, can, you have the choice on the grace to keep it or not to keep it. And those who work in hospital, they can't keep the Sabbath. Because these guys work on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, seven days a week, depending on the shift that they do. That's why we call it the dispensation of grace. Under the Mosaic law, the motto or the motif was, Obey and I will bless you. 99.9 of Christianity today are still there. Oh, if I obey, I will be blessed. Sorry, it's wrong teaching. Because I know that people that were in obedience in that building that caught in fire right now. And January the 1st, I can't remember the date, I think it were, were not that blessed. The motto on the grace is not obey and I will bless you. It's mosaic. The motto on the grace is obey because I have already blessed you. It's not the same approach. Sophia, my daughter, be good and you're going to have a lollipop. Uh, does it make me a really good teacher? I should teach the law of Moses. I place Sophia under the Mosaic law. Be good, then you're going to have a tap tap. That's all she calls a lollipop. The proper attitude, it's uh, uh, you're going to get a, a lollipop because your father already blessed you with all the blessings that I can give her, one place and so on. When I was young, I was mowing the lawn at quarter to four because my dad was coming back from work at four. So it's always good to get caught up mowing the lawn. Makes it easier after supper to have a little bit of money to go to the movie and so on. At that time it was two bucks. Right now it's 35 bucks, but there's a, still a movie. It's not the way to do it. It's stay on the couch if you want to stay on the couch and uh, act and obey dad because it changed my diaper from zero to two. So this is a very good parenthesis to open. Why should you be a good daughter? Because of what she did when you were zero to two. You were given the breast. You got change. You probably had a roof, hot water in the house. So hence, therefore, because of this, we honor mom. With this, it's way easier to heal from depression and holding a grudge against mom and dad because he said that you would be a dumb. So just the parenthesis. Learn this one because I can see too many Christians caught up. I'm doing good. I will be blessed. Not necessarily. On this planet, it's a bunch of tribulation that we have. But you face good things also. Let's carry on. Second proclamation. Sorry for deviating. But reflect on this one. Perhaps it's the best portion of the, the teaching this morning. That people are caught up in do, do, do. And you will never do, do, do enough. Because Christ says, rest, rest, rest. Take a deep breath and do. But the Christians are like this. I don't want to be in good choir anymore. They don't appreciate me. Who cares that you sing or don't sing? Nobody will appreciate you here. They're rare to find. Christ will. Wants to give you the peace that you deserve in Him. Not a bunch of doing, doing, doing. You'll get worn out. Back problem. Just, 
Some people do sessions of prayers and they praise the power of it. Invite the Muslim. They pray double as you do. Have they heard? No. Verses 6 to 7. Chapter 14, second proclamation. And I saw another angel flying in the mid heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach to those who live on the earth and know and to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and springs of water. This is, um, I just read read 667, which is the second proclamation. And just make a note, it's already on your piece of paper. That's the final call to accept the gospel there. This is the final call to make a choice between Christ and the Antichrist. You are nowhere to be seen at that place. You will not hear, you will, if God allow it, but you will not be on the planet for the angelic call to make a, to make a call. You're nowhere to be seen because that scene is before the red umbrella on the screen. You are in heaven already. The third proclamation, verse eight alone. And another angel, a second one, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She who made, she, so called she, who has made all the nations drink of the wine of the passion of her, so called her, immorality. Why she, why her, Babylon? It's because she is the great prostitute. A usage of a woman, whenever a woman is used symbolically, it is always a symbol of a false or good religious entity. Simply put, that's the fall of the political Babylon. We will see that in part 12. More details is to come in part 12. Right now, we're happy with this here right now. Fall of um, the religious system? Is that what you said? False religious system. The fourth proclamation, 9 to 12. Finish your notes. Do I need to repeat anything for the sake of note making, Krista? No. Sue? Debbie number one or two? (laughs) Depending on who arrives first, so today you're number one. Beautiful. Okay. The fourth proclamation, verses 9 to 12. Come with me. Then another angel, a third one, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast in his image, he receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand. He also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength, in the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That's Christ. And, her, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. Circle 11a. They have no rest day and night. Those who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Verse 12. Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. On your outline, what did I put there in its proper they have reached a point of no return. Once a person in the great tribulation, not you, not you, not you, once a person in the great tribulation takes the mark of the beast, no repentance possible. That's what we call a point of no return. It's for those who receive the mark. Those who will refuse the mark will die as Put the word that I need. Correct. So again, the grace shown. There will be those who say I have nothing to do. Hey, beloved, no bank account, no Walmart, no drinks, no Tim Horton, Derek, sorry for you. Okay. So by faith, okay, they said I have nothing to do and they will die. They will die physically but never die. Correct. 
And keep in mind once, one, just bear with me, Lee, here. They do not take the mark of the beast out of ignorance. Okay? They do not take the mark of the beast out of ignorance. Ask me why? Because during the Great Tribulation, who is the first group to evangelize the earth? How many? Who is the second people that will evangelize the earth also at the end of the mid-trip? Correct. The angelic proclamation, you just studied it. So you can't take the mark out of ignorance. They knew the gospel. The angels, I think, and the 144,000 would probably do be a very good example for the church age today. They know the gospel. We don't. We preach prosperity gospel. God wants you rich and healthy. <laughs> sure. I am rich and healthy. Okay? So they do not take the mark out of ignorance, you can make cross-reference to 12, Revelation chapter 12, which I will read for you, 6 and 7. Okay? It's for those refusing the mark and so on. They will, pers they will suffer persecution. Fifth proclamation, uh, we started. Uh, Stephanie, would you mind standing? We're back in a moment of time, dear beloved.